Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Melissa if you're new here and for today's video we are going to be repotting my Alocasia Fry Deck. I have her right here. I figured I would just dedicate today's video on this plant. I do need to upsize her and she might have a few corms that I can take out. I did recently upsize her. I would say it's been three or four months. I did it on my Instagram so I haven't really like show this plant very much on my channel lately. So I figured since I did it last on Instagram, I would do the repot on YouTube for today's video. And that way, if anyone has any alocasia product questions, I can just direct them to this video. Isn't she pretty? Look at those big leaves she just gave me. And she has another new growth here on the way too. Do you see the new leaf down in there? So I do have an alocasia care video on my channel and I have a video how I grow alocasia corms. They're saved under my alocasia playlist. So I will link that playlist up here for you and if you wanna refer back to those videos. But since I just have a lot of questions specifically on my fry deck, I figured I would just dedicate today's video to this plant. And yeah, I'll kind of talk about her journey with me. We'll upsize her. And yeah, that's the plan. Chai just joined me down here, of course. He heard me talking, so he has to come in for this video. Say hi, Chai. Hi, Chai Chai. Yeah. I did just water her yesterday, and I wanted to make sure she was fully hydrated before I upsize her. If you guys plan on doing any repotting with your plants, any propagating, make sure your plants are fully hydrated first because you don't wanna like propagate a stress plant out. You don't really want to repot a stress plant out. It's just going to like potentially induce more stress on your plant. So she is fully hydrated and she is happy and we are just going to gently upsize. Now, since I did upsize her recently, I am not going to be messing with the root system at all. I'm not gonna go digging around to find corms. If there's any on the outer root ball, then I will like pull those off. And I'll show you the corms that I have rooting in my IQ cabinet too, because I have several baby alocasia fry deck corms. So the history with my fry deck here, I got her last year. I think it was, maybe September, it's been over a year. I can't quite remember the date, but I will find a picture and put it on the screen. And so that was at the old house. And this plant notoriously would grow a new leaf, kill off the oldest leaf, grow a new leaf, kill off the oldest leaf. This plant only had three to four leaves on it at a time. It did this every time for like months and months and months and months. And I know alocasias are notorious for doing that. And a lot of my alocasias I've had in my collection for a while and a lot of them did the same thing. It took them a really long time to kind of hold onto more leaves. Now I am lucky with my environment here. They really just prefer this tropical, humid environment. My plant room usually stays in the 70s. Over the summer, it was reaching like 83, 84 degrees in here, even with air conditioning. And the humidity ranges from, it's gotten down into the 40s in here, and then it's gone all the way up to the 80s in here, depending on the day. Over the rainy season here, over the summer and spring, like humidity sometimes got like 70s in here almost every day. So this environment, they just really thrive in. So I definitely have that in my favor and I definitely can tell they have responded better in that environment. Now, alocasias do like consistency. They like consistency in their care as far as watering. They like to be watered on a schedule, at least I have found. Over the summer, I'm usually watering my plants twice a week, including her. And I'm still watering her twice a week. Now, a lot of my other plants have gone down to once a week because it's not as hot in here, but she is getting root bound. Hi. And that's how I know she needs an upsize. She actually yellowed off two of her oldest leaves recently. She grew a new leaf, killed off the oldest leaf. She grew another big leaf, killed off the oldest leaf. This is the next oldest leaf here. And it is pushing out a new growth here. So once this pushes out, I wouldn't be surprised if this one starts yellowing and going. I can't tell, it might even be yellowing some already. This plant has been stable for a while and was holding onto leaves for a while. And then when I went to upsize, cause I, I definitely could tell she was root bound, she stopped, like after I repotted her, she shot out like a few more leaves and then she didn't yellow anymore. And then now she started doing it again. So it's making me think like, okay, she needs an upsize. So let me take her out. Yeah, 
She's got roots there out of the bottom that you can see. And I can just feel, it just feels tight. That's one of the, I, I don't even have to like lift her out of here. I can tell when the pot is like popping out and it feels tight, then I know that like, there's a lot of roots in here. Alocasias like to be, to be snug. A lot of my alocasias are not in very big pots. Like, let me show you my capria since it's right here. So this is my alocasia capria, you see? And it's only in a five inch pot and it started in like a four inch and it is pushing a new leaf here, but they, um, they aren't in very big pots, which I kind of feel like they like being a little snug. So this is a six inch nursery pot here. And I think I'm gonna go up to an eight inch. I was waiting to get more eight inch nursery pots. I do get them off Amazon. If you're looking for eight inch plastic nursery pots, I think they're around 25 or 28 dollars of a green eight inch plastic nursery pot and you get I think like 10 of them maybe. I can't quite remember, but I can link them down below if you're looking for them. I'm not gonna add any more fertilizer because I just added fertilizer in all of my plants and I'm just gonna wait until spring before I add any more. Before I get into the repotting, I'll just touch on a few more things with its care. I honestly, you guys, I don't really do anything special. There's no like secret to getting this plant to grow. I feel like slow release fertilizer has been a huge game changer for a lot of my plants, not just this one. I feel like my plants have really responded well to Osmocote. And ever since I started using it in like April or May is when I switched over, I just have gotten a lot of growth. I think the fertilizer in combination with my environment here and just better light overall, I think gave my plants that boost in growth this year. I think if anything, giving your plants more light and a better growing environment and making sure you're feeding your plants. If you're not fertilizing, then I highly suggest fertilizing whether you use a liquid fertilizer or a slow release. I recommend Osmico just because it's the only thing that I've really used besides liquid dirt. Back in the day, I used liquid dirt for about a year and a half, almost two years on all my plants. And then it wasn't until this year when I switched over and I feel like it's just been, you just can't deny the growth difference between my Maranta just moved its leaves between like earlier this year and last year compared to my plants now. Besides those things, I just don't really have an answer for why my plants are growing and getting big leaves. I just think it's just the overall care environment. Now I do have my Alocasia phreatic and my normal chunky mix. It's just really wet on top because I watered it. And because she is root bound, she dries within like easily anywhere from like four to five days. So I do water her very heavily. I water from the top, let it drain, and then I'll put her back. She lives in this little cash pot, which I'm really sad because once I upsize her to an eight inch, I won't be able to put her back in here, which is sad. Don't you guys hate that? Now I do water my Alocasia phreatic when she's mostly dry. Sometimes I water her when she's halfway dry again. Sometimes I water her when she's all the way dry. It really depends on the week. I try to water her consistently on a schedule. I don't go longer than a week in my environment or my plants would like stress from underwatering. So it's at least once a week, but right now, depending on the environment in my plant room, it's mostly twice a week. I feel like most alocasias prefer like an aerated mix where you water, let them drain. They have a chance to dry out and then water again. They just don't like sitting in wet soil. And then the only other thing I would say is this light. Just make sure you give your alocasias great light. This Friday in particular sits up here and it gets a lot of sun on the leaves. It's like, I would say bright and direct to some direct sun. And a lot of my other alocasias are on this shelf, you can see, and they're under a 10 watt Barina light. And a lot of them like are pretty close to the light now that they've grown so big. So they are getting like a good amount of light. So I would, I would definitely encourage more light for your alocasias. It's just gonna take time for them to grow, to mature. Again, like I've had a lot of mine for almost two years. They were some of my first plants in my collection. So just time and give them a good environment, make sure you're feeding them and then over time, they're gonna grow and hold on to more leaves for you. So that's all I really have as far as care goes. I, I really, honestly, I don't think I do anything special. And yeah, once your plant establishes and grows and you know gets 
happy in its environment, it should grow and do well for you. I also just wanted to say one more thing. So the alocasia phratic, you see they have long stems here and they kind of fan out and you can stake them. You can put a stake against like the main part and like secure some of the vines. I actually did have a stake in here and then I took it out. The vines that were secured to the stake ended up being the vines that ended up like dying. So then the stake was kind of like point pointless in a way because it's going to keep pushing new leaves and these are going to keep like the older ones are going to keep flopping some. Another way you can tell your alocasia is thirsty is when the stems start to droop more and they feel flimsy. A lot of the times alocasia Acacia will hold water in their stems here or petioles and when they're thirsty they tend to droop more and when alocasias go they can go dormant especially this time of year so yes this is enough chatting for this portion of the video i'm going to get to repotting her i will set the camera up so you can see that angle of me upsizing her and what the root system looks like and if i find any corms i will take care of those too and then i will also show you the baby corms that i have rooting that i took off of her last time all right, here she goes. And my supplies are going to be very simple. I'm just going to unplop her in this plastic topin. I need to clean my potting mats. They are dirty. <laughs> and this is the eight inch plastic nursery pot that I got a set. I think they were a set of 10. Again, I will have these linked below. They are just a perfect eight inch plastic pot and I love them. The mix I'm using is just my normal chunky mix. I made this big bin up because my smaller bins kept running out fast, but I don't think I like having a big bin of soil now because I noticed um, condensation happening inside and I let it like dry out or air out, but I'm still, I'm not much of a fan of a big container, so I might switch back. Okay, I brought you just a little bit closer. So for the upsize, I'm gonna put a little bit of my mix into the bottom of this pot. I don't use anything to cover drain holes because I like drain holes. And then we are just going to squeeze to loosen her up. There is her root system. You know, she's not overly root bound. So it could just be the weather. Do you see? And then you can see there's a corm right there. So the corm, oh goodness. The corm I'm just going to remove is this one here. And it just pulls right off. I don't see any more that's like, you know, available. So all I'm gonna do is just pot in here and then just fill up around so you can see the about an inch room or so Oh, I found another corn. It just came like right off the top. So now we have two. All right, we are done. I'm gonna zoom you guys back out here. Okay, so here she goes. So this slight upsize that I did will not shock the plant at all. And the soil is still pretty wet because I just watered her yesterday. So I'm not gonna water her yet. I might wait until today's Monday. So I think I might wait till like Thursday, Friday and then she'll probably be pretty much thirsty again. So I will check her then. But yeah, I'm just gonna put her back in her spot by the window and that is it for her. So I have two corms here right here that I got. Ooh. So what I'm going to do with these, since I do have a corn video, I'm not going to go into details on like how I do it. So the only thing I do is just basically peel off this brown outer layer 
And then I'm gonna put these in my cabinet in some fluval and I will show you that real quick and then I will show you the corms that I have in there. Balloon. No, go for him. All right, I'm over here at my cabinet and here's my two corms that I just peeled. You can see how like bare they are. I pretty much just rinse them and then you just peel that brown layer off. So that's the top where the growth point is and that's the bottom and that's the top growth point. And so you're gonna put them down into your substrate like that. And be careful handling corms because they do have the calcium oxalate crystals. So some people are sensitive to those. If you are, um, I would wear gloves or something when you're peeling them and handling them. So I have two empty plastic cups and I have my fluval stratum. This is what I'm using as my substrate to root my corms. I just got a new bag, so it is full to the brim. And I wanted to show you the corms that I have. This was a fradic that I took off of the plant last time and you can see it is very well rooted in there. This is another fry deck. And I have all of these babies. You can see there are various alocasias in my collection and this one has a couple more fry decks you can see and they're all in fluval stratum. I can link fluval stratum down below. I, I used to use moss and I still love moss, but fluval has been a game changer for rooting corms. So all I'm gonna do is just take an empty cup like this and I'm just gonna scoop some fluval out. So I put like that much fluval in here. I probably need to put a little bit more because these are some, I need to get some shorter cups. And all I'm gonna do is just take the corm and you're just going to lay it down in here, kind of bury it a little bit, just like that. And then we're gonna do our other one. Okay, so top in, just like that. I'm gonna to want to make sure to hydrate these really well. So I just have my water. The only thing with fluval is that it can dry pretty quickly. So depending on the environment, you wanna keep it pretty, pretty hydrated there. And usually within, I would say, three to four weeks, you should have a new growth sprouting, sometimes sooner, sometimes a little bit longer, it just depends. And there's both of those. So I'm gonna keep these in my cabinet. And it's a good idea to label your corms too. I'm gonna to dump a little bit of excess out on that one. So that you don't forget what they are. So like, for example, this one I took off of my fry deck, my variegated one. So I have a little label here and you can just pluck it down in there. That way you know what your plant, your corm is from because it's hard to tell sometimes what your corms are if you don't label them. So yeah, that is that. And I'm gonna put these in my cabinet and we should be able to see new roots and growth pretty quickly. So thank you guys so much for watching me repot my fry deck here. If you have any questions, definitely let me know down below in the comments. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and being here and I will talk to you soon.